So what do you do when you can't experimentally determine the enthalpy of a reaction or you can't indirectly determine the enthalpy of reaction using Hess's law. Maybe you don't have access to bond energies. And remember, bond energies just give you a, an estimation. One thing we can do is we can use some data that's already be, been determined. But in order to do that, we need to recognize that the data um, that we will be using is at standard state. So using these standard values, we need to remember that standard state is a gas at one atmosphere, pure gas at one atmosphere. If we have a solid or liquid, it's the pure substance in its most stable form at one atmosphere. And if we're dealing with a solution, it's a one molar concentration. So if we're going to use data that's already been um, determined, we need to make sure that the data is at standard state. And once we do that, and once we realize that, we can calculate the standard enthalpy change of a reaction. So the change in enthalpy for a process um, where when all reactants and products are in their standard states is called the standard enthalpy change. And you'll notice it has a little uh, degree symbol. That's just to indicate that we are, we are measuring the enthalpy ch change for standard state reactants and products. Now to figure this out, to figure out the heat of a reaction or the standard heat of a reaction, what we can use is we can use a list of values um, known as the heats of formation, the standard heats of formation. For a compound, the, this is the change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound is formed from its individual elements in their standard states. And for a pure element, the standard heat of formation is, is zero. This is kind of like our baseline for the element in its pure form. Um, by the way, we don't need to form an element. It's already there. We're assuming in its, it's in its standard state. We are going to be talking about forming compounds and uh, decomposing compounds um, when we talk about calculating the overall enthalpy of a reaction. But first, let's just dive into the standard enthalpy of formation just a little bit and kind of I'll explain and show you what that means. So we have glucose here and it's going to be solid. It's in its solid form. It's in its most pure natural form at one atmosphere pressure. And we are going to look at what it takes to form this glucose. So for forming this glucose, we have um, glucose as a product of this reaction and it's in its solid form so we're gonna keep track of the uh, state that things are in because state is going to be important for this. Now we know that glucose consists of six carbons and what we're gonna say is we're gonna say that six carbons in the most pure natural form at one atmosphere is actually graphite so six carbon uh, moles of carbon or atoms of carbon in graphite form plus six molecules of H2 or moles of H2 in gas form, it's in its most natural state at one atmosphere pressure, plus three moles or three molecules of O2 give us all, give us this one molecule or one mole of glucose. This was formed from standard state reactants or the individual elements in their standard states. Now what we can do is we can look up on a table of selected substances and we can figure out the delta H of formation or the standard heat of formation because these values have been figured out already. They've been tested in a lab in standard states and they're found readily uh, on the internet or in textbooks or in uh, index manuals. So the heat of formation, and that's what it's called, it's the formation, the heat that's released when this compound is formed is 1,273.02, negative 1,073.02 kilojoules per mole. That means it's exothermic, it's releasing this energy. Now if we reverse that, remember the standard heat um, for this reverse reaction is a positive 1,273.02 kilojoules per mole. That means if we take glucose and break it down, decompose it into elements in their standard form, we will, it will require 1,273.02 kilojoules of heat per mole. So how can we use this formation and decomposition idea with the predetermined values to figure out the enthalpy of a reaction? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to take a look at this reaction for the combustion of methane. We're going to say that in order for this reaction to, to happen, 
CH4 needs to decompose into its individual elements, carbons and hydrogens, or its elements in natural form. Then those elements will react with oxygen and form carbon dioxide and water. So we're going to be looking at the formation of carbon dioxide and the formation of water. So let's take a look at our table. Let's find CH4 on your table, your thermodynamic quantity table. So CH4, and by the way, every table, there are differences in tables. So we're just looking at approximate values. If yours says something just slightly different, no big deal. So to the, the formation of CH4 is an exothermic reaction which releases 74.8 kilojoules per mole, but now we're decomposing this. So we need to put a plus sign there. Um, the heat of formation of oxygen is zero. So what we're doing is we're taking apart all of our reactants and it's going to cost us 74.8 kilojoules. That means we have to put in 74.8 kilojoules per mole. And then what we get out is what we get out based on the um, putting together of the new, or the formation, I should say, of the new molecules. Well, if we look up on our table, carbon dioxide releases 393.5 kilojoules when it forms, and water releases 241.82 kilojoules when it forms. And we have two molecules or two moles of water. So we're going to add all of this together and uh, do the little multiplying and um, add all of our numbers together. We have negative... 393.5 plus 2 times negative 241.82. Come on. Okay, this gives me a negative 877.14 kilojoules. And that's how much I get out. So if I take apart all the reactants, it's costing me 74.8, but I get out by putting together new products 877.14, and that's why, why that's negative. So the net here, if I take negative 877.14 plus 74.8, um, I get that total, and by the way, we're just subtracting out or we're just um, undoing what we had to put in here. So my net is going to be negative 802.3, and that is kilojoules per mole for this reaction. So that's how much that I get out of this reaction. Um, I get out from just forming the products, the negative 877.14, and I had to put in 74.8 just to get it started. So my net is negative 802.3 kilojoules per mole. This is an exothermic reaction. One way that you will see this written very often, and we will write it and set it up as sort of an equation, is the standard heat of reaction is equal to the sum of the heat of formation, the standard heats of formation of the products. So we're going to take those products, the 393.5 and the 241.82, we're going to add them together. That's what that, um, that sigma Greek symbol represents, the sum of all of those products, minus the sum of the heat of formation, the standard heat of formation of our reactants. And that will give us, if we take that, that equation and plug everything in, that will give us the delta heat of reaction, the standard delta heat of reaction, or the standard enthalpy change of a reaction. So let's do some practice problems. We'll practice with this one using the enthalpies of formation. So predetermined values on a data table calculate the delta H of reaction or the heat of reaction for the decomposition of calcium carbonate into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. So I'm going to write the equation here. And this is already balanced, so I don't need to worry about any coefficients, which is nice. Um, and then I'm going to set up my equation. So the delta heat, uh, the standard delta heat of reaction is equal to, 
And actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find all of these values on the, my table and just put their values, the corresponding values, above each reactant and product. So carbon dioxide is negative 393.5. Uh, calcium oxide is negative 635.5 and the heat of formation of calcium carbonate is negative 1207.1. Remember these are all being formed so they're all going to be negative or zero if it's just in its pure form. So we're going to take the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the sum of the heats, the, the change in heat, the delta heat of formation of the reactants. So the sum of the delta heat of formation of the products is negative 393.5 plus a negative 635.5. I get a negative 1,029 kilojoules. And now I'm going to subtract the, um, the sum of the delta heat of formation of my reactants. And the delta heat of formation of my reactants is a negative 1,207.1 kilojoules. So I subtract a negative, which is really just adding a positive, which is what we did in our previous, the previous slide that I showed you. Um, so we have negative 1,029 minus a negative 1,207.1 kilojoules. And I get a net of 178.1 kilojoules per mole. This would be an endothermic reaction. I have to put more energy in than what I get out for this reaction.